Dr. David Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Uh, today's topic will be how to treat dermal pigmentation. Last week I did a topic on how to treat pigmentation and that's pigmentation in general. Now, like I said, to go through the whole spectrum of disorders of pigmentation it will take at least an hour and a half. So today we'll be talking about dermal pigmentation, which is pigmentation below your epidermis. Now, dermal pigmentation usually uh, is caused by, um, once again, melasma, because melasma you can have epidermal, dermal, but most of the time it's mixed. So dermal melasma is one of the hardest conditions to treat. The reason being is because it's deep in your dermis and um, out of reach of creams, okay? So we can use lasers to treat that. And um, dermal melasma is a little bit different because it, instead of being brown, under a special instrument called a dermatoscope, we can see little gray specks, which means it's actually deep. So that's one. The second thing which we see uh, quite a fair bit, apart from tattoos, which is a form of dermal pigmentation, is what's known as traumatic tattoos or dirt tattoos. Now, dirt tattoos occur because of trauma. And the trauma can be due to a fall, uh, it can be due to an accident, it can be due to an injury, uh, it can be due to an explosion as well. So um, well, I see a lot of soldiers coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan with um, EOD, so basically um, explosive devices and all. And that can implant dirt and implant um, gravel into your skin. And that's deep in the dermis. So you can see how I treat this. Um, I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples. The best way to treat this is with um, Q-switch lasers. And I often use either the Pico laser or even the Nano laser. And most patients require between two to three treatments spaced about realistically two to three months apart. And what happens is that that laser shatters the actual particles, which are basically dirt or small rocks, into smaller particles of which the immune system actually carries it away. So much like tattoos, um, this laser itself basically is a photoacoustic laser. So it breaks down or shatters the, uh, the pigment with what's known as a very short pulse duration. So we're using super high energies, like super high energies. Um, and it just shatters the pigment. Uh, and your body's immune system carries that away over time. So the, one of the rate limiting factors for this is how good is your immune system. And it's also dependent on the location of the tattoo or location of the dirt tattoo or trauma. Uh, most often it's on the face, which means it's great because you've got lots of lymphatics around there, which means you can carry it out within, like I said, two to three months. Uh, it looks difficult, but it's actually super easy and super predictable. Another form of dermal pigmentation, which I see a lot, Birthmarks, so there are different types of birthmarks. Last week we talked about CALM, C-A-L-Ms, which are super common. And then you have these unusual birthmarks, for example, um, nebus of Ota, nebus of Ito, uh, dermal melanocytosis. These are all, <laughs> in the real life, they're super rare. Um, I, I see one case every two weeks. So I find, in my opinion, for as a laser dermatologist, they're, they're pretty, pretty much common. Uh, and they occur because of your melanocytes, basically your cells, which are supposed to sit on the basement layer of the skin. They actually do not sit there. They are a genetic anomaly, which means they're a birthmark, and they actually sit deeper in the dermis and produce pigment. So there's a whole spectrum of dermal melanocytosis, um, but the most common birthmarks I see are the O2 birth birthmarks. Now, treatment for these is exactly the same as um, using uh, Q-switch lasers. So, I use uh, a different wavelength, so a 1064 wavelength, because they're actually deep. And um, I prefer um, nano lasers. The reason because, sure, uh, there are great lasers like picosecond lasers that can actually um, help, but the most embarrassing thing for Pico Schwer, which is the first Pico second laser, is that they developed a handpiece called a 1064 handpiece. And it's a filtered handpiece and it does absolutely nothing. So it's embarrassing for the company. Uh, don't do that again, guys. Um, 
but using the old-fashioned C6 uh, or rev lights, um, Q-switch lasers, these uh, birthmarks respond well, uh, and they do take anywhere up to a year before they go. Okay, now the third case which I'm going to discuss today, uh, third case, yeah, uh, it's a super rare case. It's like a super, super rare. Uh, it's called Ajara, um, Ajaria, right? Um, A-G-Y-R-I-A, A-G-Y-R-I-A, right? Now, uh, a dermatologist is lucky to see one of these cases in their entire lifetime. So, uh, and to treat one for me is just like super exciting. Um, you know, a nerd as I am, um, I get super excited by treating super rare cases. And you can see this is due to naturopathic causes. So, um, Oprah Winfrey had a case, uh, which I'll show you shortly, in regards to a gyria. Yes, you are blue. Oh <laughs> you are blue. Hi. You are blue. All right, all right. You're blue. Blue, blue. You are blue. <laughs> this is a first on the Oprah show. We have never had a blue man. Make a glass of colloidal silver and we'd, and we'd drink it. And, uh, and you were drinking it for his... Petroleum poisoning? Well, I figured I might as well drink it too if it was such wonderful stuff. Yeah, because you thought it was going to do what for you? I had no idea. But why would you drink it if you didn't think it was going to have some health benefits? Oh, I wasn't going to say, here, take this. You know, yeah. I thought the, the, the kindest thing to do was to take it with me. You know, just make them more comfortable with the idea. And uh, it was about that time that I noticed it having some interesting effects. This is what it looks like, colloidal silver. By the way, it's, you know, it's, it's a very old therapy. I mean, yeah. For thousands of years, humans have realized that, that when you put silver in solution, uh, it actually is bad for bacteria. And the reason for that, by the way, is it prevents the bacteria from making energy. But it does the same thing to our cells also. Yeah. And so th this ailment that makes you, and I'm going to call it that because you're through and through blue. It's not just on the surface. Um, it, it's called argyria. And what ends up happening is the blue gets into your cells, the silver, yeah. And you know how you get silver in a photographic plate? When it gets exposed to sun, it turns a color? Yeah. Or, or, or light even? Well, the same thing happened to you. You basically tattooed your entire body uh, with this silver. Well, it's going to save me a lot of money at the tattoo parlor, I think. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. So Ajara was uh, caused by a naturopathic remedy known as colloidal uh, silver. So colloidal silver ingestion actually causes... Um, silver to build up in your sweat glands and as a result with that silver it causes a reflection the more silver you have the deeper the color and it goes from brown which is on the outside uh, but in this case with silver ingestion it actually goes gray first and then it goes blue because the deeper the pigment the bluer the pigment so you can see in in my case um, I call him the silver dude because he's <laughs> He's actually silver. The photographs um, don't depict it very well, but he's virtually silver. Uh, and his father was feeding him uh, colloidal um, silver together with his brother for many years for ailments such as cough and colds and um, aches and pains and sprains and all that. But over the years, the silver uh, built up in his skin and as a result, he is gray. But using this particular laser, uh, in this case I used um, a Pico laser, yeah? And uh, it is an instant, I'm talking about instant. You can see from the photographs, the areas which I treated and the areas which are not treated, an instant removal of the silver. Now, no one's reported this in the literature before. I think it's due to the breakup of the actual silver itself. Uh, and we're waiting for electron microscopy. So you guys at the Royal Brisbane Hospital, Brisbane Electron Microscopy Unit, can you please report on this case uh, because we can solve the mystery of Ajaria. Please, please, I beg you. Um, this would be a super exciting case. So you can see these are really, really rare causes of dermal pigmentation. Uh, so guys, look, I'll go through different forms of pigmentation um, in the future. There's so many other causes, you know, drug-induced pig pigmentation due to minocycline, amiodarone, uh, lasers to help that, and there's so many other birthmarks that I can treat. Um, 
Guys, I hope you liked that brief uh, you know, summary on dermal pigmentation. I only covered three cases. Uh, I can cover a lot more, but it's a short video. Um, if you like it, please subscribe. I try to do an interesting video uh, once every week, Brisbane time. So, it, and this is an interactive channel. So it's not just about me talking. It's about, you know, you asking me questions. I'm happy to answer sensible questions. Don't ask me what can I do to my birthmark because I have no idea what your birthmark until I actually examine it. So please comment below, uh, share, and by all means subscribe, please. Um, I'll see you at the same time, same place next week. Bye for now.